We have a question for physicists about the double slit experiment, which involves a controversial statement that physicist Tom Campbell made about it. The question is important to us at allreality.com because Campbell is the only physicist we're aware of who has a complete theory that can explain all of quantum uh, mechanics research results and consciousness research results as well as explaining multiple realities. The question supposes a double slit experiment in which the detectors are in place, they're detecting, and as soon as they detect the which path information, they erase it, they delete it. And then, once all the photons have gone through the slits, then the experimenter looks at how the quanta was registered on the screen. So the question that we have is, can anybody give us experimental resu results to tell us, if you run the experiment as I just uh, outlined it, when you look at the screen, will you see an interference fringe pattern? Or will you see a particle pattern? In other words, is this animation correct? Now the question is controversial because there's a disagreement between Tom Campbell, what he said, and two of the physicists that I met at Texas A&M uh, when I visited uh, during a, a visit you can read about on my blog. First, we'll, we'll look at what Campbell had to say in a lecture in Calgary, Canada, based on his understanding of what Bohr and the original quantum mechanics researchers found. We're picking up the lecture from the point where he's just explained that physicist Young uh, did an experiment to see that uh, light acted as a wave going through the slits. And then Einstein comes along and shows that uh, light are, is made of discrete uh, packets of momentum, photons, and so their part light is a particle. And to test this, they fired photons uh, one at a time at a double slit and uh, got a wave pattern, got a fringe pattern, which of course was uh, amazing. They didn't, it should have been a particle pattern, so then they put detectors in place and then got a particle pattern. So we pick up Campbell's lecture at that point. That was surprising. So when they didn't have the detectors, they got this. When they had the detectors, they got that. Obviously, it's those detectors. When they turn the detectors uh, off, they get that pattern. To put the detectors on, they get this pattern. But they also found out that if they didn't turn the detectors off, but they just let the detectors detect, so the detectors were doing whatever they were doing to detect that, but they didn't collect the data, they'd get this pattern. And they realized that it didn't have to do with those detectors at all. It had to do with whether or not they collected the data. If they collected the data, They'd get these two spots. If they didn't collect the data, they'd get a diffraction pattern. And then they found out it really didn't even matter whether they collected the data, because they did collect the data, and then erased the data. And when they collected the data, here's all the data. You know, they didn't look at it. They just collected it on a whatever they collect data in a, in a machine. And then they delete the data. Then they got a diffraction pattern. So they found out what was really the key was that information. If you had the information available in this reality frame that told you that it was a particle going through a slit because you measured which slit it went through, then you'd have to get this. You'd have to get the, the two spots. If you didn't have any information telling you, and it doesn't matter whether you'd collected it early or not, but if that information was gone and you didn't have any information telling you, then you'd get this. Okay, now what's going on here is that we're seeing that there's a rule here about the consistency 
of your reality. You can't have two pieces of information in your reality that are contradictory. Okay? So once you know that a particle went through there, then you have to get a particle pattern. If you don't know that there was any particles going through there, or that it, where it particularly went through, then you get a diffraction pattern. Now if you measured the data, let's say we, we use these detectors, we measure the data. Now it's not a matter of looking at the measured data, it's a matter of are we going to have a, a discontinuity in our reality or not. You see, so you measure that data. Now if you turn around then and look at this, what are you going to get? So you never look at that data, it doesn't matter. If you look at this, you'll get two spots because you have measured data sitting over here. And then if you erase that data, it makes no difference because once you have a particle in this reality frame, it has to stay here. It has to be a particle. It's not like you can make this, this thing blink back and forth between these two. Okay, now, here's what two of the physicists at Texas A&M had to say about the issue, which I brought up while we were traveling in a car. Dimitri and Ari. Tom Campbell is saying, to um, see if the detectors are collapsing the wave function into a particle pattern. You put the detectors on the slits, you mm -hmm. turn them on, you let them detect, but you don't save the data, you don't look at the data, you never see the data. The data... But the detector is still there. The detector is there, it's, it's but you don't... It. But the data just never, no one ever sees it, it just it disappears. Yeah, that's And that then wrong. you would get an mm -hmm. interference pattern mm -hmm. rather than a particle pattern. And yeah. you're saying that's wrong because if the detector is still there recording it, then uh, never you, you will never get fringes. So you always have particle property. property. It, it, if it's detecting but you nobody looks at the data, Doesn't nobody the collects the data, yeah. As long as there is a possibility to be that the data is that somebody can do that. As long as there's a possibility yeah. that you could have collected the data. Yes. Even though you, you never collected anything, you turn off the detectors, yeah. the experiment's over, then you look at the screen, you're going to see particle patterns. That's right. Because you had the possibility that you could collect. Because the, inform the which way information is there. Well, no, it's 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 where it's where is it? If there is a possibility to obtain the which way information, then in principle the information is there, right? Well, if you have the possibility to collect the information, but don't actually collect it. Yeah, but the information is there. If where there, where is it? Yeah, but uh, uh. you turn. I don't know about turn off, but as long as you said like the detector is on. Mm -hmm. But you are like throwing away data. Yes. So that's the thing we are saying. So mm -hmm. even if you don't look at the data, that doesn't mean that fringe will be gone or fringe will be there. Mm -hmm. Because detector is detecting there and messing with uh, things. And so recording, how to say, um, you are able to uh, get the which path information. You could have gotten which path information, but if you're not collecting the data, as you said, the mm. cut, yeah, the, cut wire. the wire, so there's no way you could get the information. Yeah. You're saying you're still going to get a particle pattern because you had, you could have not cut the wire. Yeah. So when Campbell saw this video. He told me that he would really like to see some good research done to settle the issue once and for all. And he said if he's wrong, of course, he will rework the mechanics of his theory, the, the part that uh, is necessary, but that he didn't think it would affect his overall theory. We don't know who is right. So we're hoping that some physicist with a double slit experiment set up will just run this, the experiment and settle the issue. Now in the meantime, we're pretty sure that Ari said something that's incorrect. 
Mind you, Ari has a PhD in theoretical physics, physics and a PhD in applied physics. So he may just have misspoken or maybe because his work is focused uh, on things other than the double slit experiment, they're doing very amazing things at Texas A&M. Or as a young physicist, he may not be up to speed on the details of the groundbreaking advanced version of the double slit experiment that was done in 1999 called the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment. In any case, that e delayed choice experiment contradicts what Ari said when he mentioned something about the detectors messing with the photons to collapse the wave function. That concept was definitively proved wrong by the delayed choice quantum eraser and others like it. Ironically, the man who led the team who devised that experiment is Ari and Dimitri's boss. He's the head of the physics department at Texas A&M, Dr. Marlon Scully, who is also simultaneously a professor of physics with a laboratory at Princeton University and Baylor University. He had invited me there to Texas to talk about the delayed, slit uh, the delayed choice quantum eraser. He led the team that did the experiment in 1999 at uh, Maryland, University of Maryland. And it ended uh, the excuse that had been used for almost 100 years by physicists who wanted to cling to the idea of, of a Newtonian objective rea reality um, that doesn't include consciousness as a, in a fundamental role. And that's because Dr. Scully's experiment would only measure the witch path information after the quanta has been registered on the screen. So there is absolutely no way that the detectors could physically interfere with, mess with photons going through the slits. Now we're going to review the uh, delayed choice quantum eraser experiment in case anyone mistakenly thinks that it answers the question that we're asking now about erasing data <clears throat> because it has quantum eraser in the title of the experiment. But what we're proposing is an experiment where you record, record the data and erase it, whereas the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment actually doesn't erase data that's all been, already been recorded. It, um, it works a little differently and this is how it works. So there is material on the other side of the slit when the photon goes through A or B, it spits out an entangled pair of photons. So for the B path, it has a certain path that follows the entangled pair as one half of the pair gets registered on the screen. The other half of the pair takes a much longer route goes through a prism, hits a half silver mirror, and gets detected. And there's an eight nanosecond delay. And the same thing for the other path. So it's, you're detecting which path information, detecting in which path of the information because you know if it hits D3, it came from A. If it hits D4, it came from B. Because these are half silvered, half of the time, the photons are going to go through. 
And that's when they get to the erasing portion. This is why it's called the quantum eraser. Because when the photon gets here, they bounce around again, half silvered mirror, so it can either get detected, this path B can either get detected D1 or D2, because it can bounce up or it can come down. Same thing for path A. So it's not erasing which path information, it's obfuscating it. It's, it's not allowing you to know what the which path information was. Now when it gets to any of these detectors, <clears throat> the time at which it hits a detector is recorded. And the time at which the entangled pair hits the screen is also recorded. So that once all the data has been compiled, then you can analyze the data by first plotting the on the x-axis where all the quanta was detected and at what time. And since you know what time a photon hit the screen here, you can look to see if it's entangled pair, where, which detector it's entangled pair uh, registered. And then you plot, for instance, for D3, you plot which of these uh, photons were detected by D3 and you detect and you plot which were detected by D2 and so on. And of course D2 and D1 have no which path information. Only D3 and D4. Um, once you've separated out the points and when they're detected you see that photons that had no which path information forms a fringe pattern. Particles that were detected with which path information forms a particle pattern. By the way, they didn't use D4. They just needed D3 for their data. So um, that's how the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment works. Of course, uh, for our uh, purposes here, we're, we're just pointing out that data was not detected, which path information was not detected and then erased, it was just obfuscated, was never detected. Um, of course, with this experiment, there's the other big question of how is it that whether or not you detect something Eight, six, and eight nanoseconds after an event, registering of quanta on a screen, that then it affects what you get registered on the, on the screen. Is that retro cause, causation and so on? And that on our all reality page on the, on the double slit experiment section, you can see all about that. But for our purposes here, just wanted you to understand that this uh, doesn't answer our question um, there is a hint that, of course, if you threw away the data about which photons had which path information and which didn't, we know that before you look at which photons had which path information and which didn't, before you separate them out, you get a particle pattern. But that's, we still haven't erased the information. We just haven't utilized it yet. So we don't think that answers the question at hand. So we're hoping that someone will just, you don't have to do a delayed choice experiment, just a simple double slit experiment. Detect, erase before you look at the screen and let us know what happens. Thank you very much.